What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the show. I'm here live in the summer place to be, Detroit, Michigan. Don't know why. We'll ask Chris Ryan why later. But uh, we're at the Global Go Abundance Conference and uh, happy to be on stage with a bunch of guys in the room talking to two of the OGs, two of the founders of Go Abundance, about their upcoming uh, book called The Quitter's Manifesto. So I'll intro them real quick. All the way to the left, if you're watching on YouTube with the bright blue uh, shirt that's blinding me a little bit right now, is best-selling author, former number one real estate uh, agent in the entire world, GoBundance founder and elder. Give it up for Pat Hyben. Yeah. yeah! Yeah! And to my immediate left, of course, another GoBundance founder, best-selling author of Tribe of Millionaires, uh, a former real estate agent as well, and founder of the One Life Fully Live Foundation, a man changing lives. Tim Rode, everybody. All right, so let's dive in. So you guys write this book, The Quitter's Manifesto. Uh, this is sort of part and parcel, I think, with every uh, investor, entrepreneur, people that are maybe in jobs and then looking at a side hustle. Everyone wants to quit. So the book is appropriate, and we'll talk all about this. But I want to hear your stories, your quitter story. So whoever wants, I'll, I'll call this out. Pat, you always defer to Tim I saw on stage. I'm kidding, it was the other way around. But I'm going to start with you, Pat. Uh, what was your quitter story? When did you quit? What made you decide to quit? Give us that backstory. Yeah, I mean, it depends what I quit. You know, I quit a couple of things. Um, I guess the biggest thing I quit was selling real estate. Uh, that was my career for, you know, 25 years or so. So a significant part of my adult life. Um, and um, I quit when I, I went from having a lot of fun, meaning in the, in the, 2003, four, five. I mean, it was a Midas touch time. It kind of like now everything I touch turned to gold. Uh, mortgage company, title company, uh, you know, tons of, you know, 60 units or so monthly, just, just crushing it. And, uh, and then everything just kind of stopped, mm -hmm. you know, went to, <clears throat> I think we were averaging like 45 units a month or something, and then all of a sudden went to one month it was like 11, like overnight, <clears throat> like from March to April. And it was like, oh, damn, you know, we got the bills are the same. Um, and then, then we went through that period, and I just didn't like it. Like, I didn't like how it felt anymore. <clears throat> and quite frankly, I was done. I mean, I was, you know, I, 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 yeah, I always just kind of know. You know, I, I tell the story. One time I was on a listing appointment uh, with a seller and I fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bad sign. Dude, I swear to God. Like, right, I had, like, pizza right in front or something. Of them? Or yeah, that? yeah. Like, I don't know. I had, like, pizza or some, something for lunch. You know, it was, like, 3.30 in the afternoon, the worst time. And, and I was going over. You know, she was talking. Bah, 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 bah. The house was dark and fucking hot, you know. And I was like... And she goes, <coughs> she goes, you just fell asleep. And, and I go, oh, oh, no, I didn't, no, no. Oh, there. And, and then I went and I like went to the bathroom, put water on my face, you know, came back out. And then she starts droning on again. And I, I just did one of these, like I, like I <laughs> fell off a curb, you know. And then, man, I lost that listing so fast. I, I didn't get it. I walked out of there and I'm like, I quit. You know, I'm out of here. I'm not do I can't do this anymore. I hate this, you know. Set this up. What were you making annually at that point? Uh, your commission, your take. Give us an idea of that. Well, you know, nothing. Like, I mean, like, what, like 2000 and, I mean, at, at, at basically nothing. Like, I mean, like way back in 2003, three, four. you mean in that time? Yeah, just give me an idea. Like, what was your income? And then I, I'm trying to set up, like, what was the, what was the financial situation you were in to be able to quit. So yeah, what were you making early on when you were, you know, number one realtor in the world? What was your annual income at that point? Yeah, I guess the, uh, my biggest uh, tax return was like a, a million and a half. Okay. And then at the time, at this time, you're saying that pretty much you were, you weren't. Yeah, we were just, we were just bailing water at the, uh, 2010, 2011, you know, we weren't making any money yet. Passively? What were you making at that point? Oh, you know, I still had a lot of rentals and stuff. So passively, I was making probably a couple hundred grand. Okay. Yeah. All right. And your expenses at that time? <clears throat> well, personal expenses? Personal, yeah. Well, they were probably a couple hundred grand. You know, at that point I had kids and still probably, you know, in high school and that sort of thing. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I, and I had the dream house and, the, 
you know, the Mac Daddy lifestyle. You know, that was where our peak spending, I think, was right around that time. You know, I think I had three cars and the dream house, the big house, that that did the everything. You know, kids. Yep, yep. Blah blah it. blah. So okay. yeah. I, so anyway, so that that was one time, and then I quit the. Then I had the Real Estate Rockstars podcast. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And I did 850 episodes of that, and just. You know, I just wasn't happy. I just realized I just didn't like it. You know, it just became a drag for me. Like, a, like it's just like, oh, man, another agent I got to talk to is going to tell me about how they get business through their SOI. And give me a break, man. I mean, everybody was, and I just felt like I just wasn't looking forward to it. And um, I quit that, too. You know, I just, so, so I've never had a problem just like, you know, this, this sucks. I'm out. You this, know, this podcast, too. There's a trend here. You quit this one too. Oh, I did quit this one. Yeah, <laughs> I told Jamie, "Hey, can you help me out? You know, I got COVID or something." And then he's like, "Yeah." And then I just stopped returning his calls. And he he uh, <laughs> <laughs> put that in your notes. <laughs> this is Pat style. Hey, you want you want to like you know do a couple episodes, just kind of share it, and then he never did another episode. <laughs> That was the end of that, but hey, I love it, so I appreciate it. But I did, I did like, what, like 100 or something, right? Yeah, like yeah, The yeah. first yeah. 100, I mean, you know, I get tired of things. Like, I, I think, like, uh, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm ADD. Like, I just don't, um, don't like doing the same thing over and over, I yeah. guess. You know, is what it is. That's why I love GoBundant so much, because so every, everything is just, every event, every thing that we do is so different, you know? All the people are different, all the people are new, and they're just like, I don't know. Yeah, no, I get so it. So different. That's good, that's a good setup, and we'll, we'll kind of come back to a couple things there, but Tim, go for it. What is your quitter's story? Um, mine started, I, I was a grocery clerk till like 25 years old, barely, barely graduated high school, and then got into real estate and was kicking ass, loved it, was buying some rentals, and all of a sudden, like Pat, I was like, you know what? This just isn't feeling good anymore. It was like what, what was so exciting at the beginning was just dreadful at the end. And it just was not juicing me anymore. And uh, so I kind of did a series of quitting from no longer listing and selling real estate to just being an investor to uh, really dropping out of life for a while and spending a lot of time just getting the goods in the woods and trying to figure out what's next. And it was always like, um, I know there's something in front of me. What can I do while I'm juggling these bulbs, throw new ones in and letting the ones go behind me so I can get to the next thing? And I think that's what worked for me was um, it, it just seemed like the, it had rusted you know, for, for uh, listing and selling real estate and then for investing. And then I just got bored with it and just wanted what's next. And I think the challenge was always, how do I keep going? I, I love the analogy of uh, juggling balls, all the things we have in our life, our kids, our family, our work, all the things you want to do. And how do you throw in the new balls without having the whole thing go away? And I think that was something that Pat and I have always been really good at, is landing on our feet and not making too many mistakes. So. Okay. Same for you. At the peak of your, your real estate career, what was your income and what was your passive income? Well, income mine was a little interesting because when I did it, I was actually, I, I turned 40 years old. I was worth a million dollars. I just thought that was such a cool thing. I you know, came from nowhere, barely graduated high school, and here I am, you're a millionaire, you're in Belize. And, it, and this conversation went through my head, and it was kind of like, dude, I am so proud of you. I never thought you'd be here. It was like, well, what do you want to do next? And it's like, I never want to list another fucking house. Mm. <laughs> and it was like, wow, well, what are you going to do? Well, I flipped, that seemed to work, and I went back and I changed my team. So at that time, to answer your question, um, I was making about um, 200000 a year okay. and living on about 150000 So it wasn't like there was a big gap. And it also wasn't like I had five hundred grand in the bank. It was a really bold move. Yeah. yeah. And, and what I did, and I think you guys can relate to this because we're all kind of the same breed, is I, I believed in myself. 
Mm. And I just, and with smaller kids and stuff, it was like, I'm, I just know I don't want to do that anymore. And I, and I have such faith in you that you're going to figure this out. So I love that. I share that story. But what, um, were you making any passive income at the time that you quit? Was it modest? <clears throat> Yeah, it was probably on on paper, you know, twenty grand a year. But with we were talking about the rentals last night with Daniel Del Real and them about how when you think you're making twenty grand a year, but when you get at the end of the year, you're making eight. Right, right, right. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. that's how it is with the rental. I had actually in the <clears throat> in the early, you know, say ten years ago, I, I think I might have had three tax returns in a row that were negative. One, two years in a row were negative half a million dollars. And, and like, I couldn't get a loan for a while. Mm. Yeah. Like, you know, like, yeah, you no, no lender, they just wouldn't sure. give me money. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just, um, that happens with rentals. So this you know, is You plain. write off so much depreciation and cross seg, plus all you got the, yeah. the repairs. And like Tim says, you, you could buy a rental for 200 grand and get two grand a month and end up negative 20. Right. Yeah, at the end of the year, just because of, air conditions and everything else. Something pops, right? Yeah. Sewer line goes, whatever, there's two years of cash yeah. gone, right, yeah. Um, but I think this is where uh, this is where I wanna go because I, I know for me when I quit, it wasn't with like, I think there's the, the thought or the image of, oh, I just simply stepped from here over to here and everything is smooth, right? Yeah. But there's a, there's a chasm you cross. And I think for a lot of people where, where they're stuck in their jobs, where they feel uh, that they can't quit is because, well, I make 300,000, once I make 300,000 here, only then can I quit. When do you? Is there a percentage at which? Is it just a mindset piece? I mean, do you, do you recommend a financial level of security first, or is it just when you're, when you're ready, when you have that pain moment, uh, as an aside, do you guys know Len Stone? Yes. Len yeah, Stone. yeah. Great I remember point. Len saying uh, at some point, he was sitting down with his wife, they own an insurance agency, yeah. Uh, they were doing their annual planning, uh, and he was doing well as an insurance agent. And he, he pushed back from the table, and he goes, I don't want to fucking do this anymore. And that was it. He quit, and the next year, he was an insur uh, a real estate agent. He made like 600 grand his first year or something crazy. Wow. But um, I'm trying to get at, you know, wh what, is the, what is the moment that you quit? Is it, is it only when you have a certain amount of financial whatever, do you say? Or is it like, look, yeah, I mean, ideally, but when you're done, you're done. You got to bet on you. I got something. That. Go for so, it. So um, I think the place to start is what we call in the book the soul-sucking audit. <laughs> How bad is it? Take a, you take a graph, and on a scale of 1 to 10, am I making what I'm worth, and do I love what I do? And so if you look on it, and, uh, you know, I'm making what, I worth, what I'm worth, and I love what I do, and it's a 7 on both or above, it's not too bad, but if you look at that graph and it's down to a five, four, three in one or both of those areas, it's probably time to take some serious moves. So I think that was, you know, you talked about Len as a good example, that's not us. Um, I'll bet when he did that graph in his mind, it was before below a seven and it was time to sell the wine. Right. You know? yeah. So I think it's different for everybody and it's, um, you know yourself, you know your circumstances, and, um, and in this room, we're all, I mean, we're all quitters if you look at it. We're all the type of people who say, if, if I'm mad as hell and I'm not gonna take it anymore, then I'm gonna do the next thing. Mm. Yeah. Makes sense, so go for it, Tim. Do you, or, uh, Pat, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, um, <clears throat> is there a moment I, I think at times, yeah, there's a moment. There's a story I tell in the book um, about, like, probably my, not my first quitting experience because I quit other stuff as a kid. I mean, I was always, like, well, as a kid, it's, it's uh, loyalty is fleeting. You think the kids are bad now. I kind of feel like when I was a kid, it was so much easier to quit. I was always quitting. I had, like, five different jobs dishwashing, and I would always quit one restaurant to go to another for an extra 50 cents an hour or mm. because they shared the tips with the waiter or whatever. But I, I, um, I remember um, I was 20 years old. Uh, it was between my junior and senior year of college. I moved to Ocean City, Maryland to work at the beach. Uh, on a whim because a buddy of mine was living down there and there was an opening in a house across the street from him. And I was slicing meats at a deli making $8 an hour. 
and uh, a guy came to me and was like, hey, a bunch of us have this gig on the boardwalk where we walk up and down and try to convince uh, people to uh, go to this timeshare presentation. And if they go to the timeshare presentation, you get 50 bucks. Um, and then they go on this three hour tour, right? And they try to close them on a the timeshare and then they get, they get $50 gift certificate to a steakhouse. So you're like, hey, would you like to go eat the dinner for free tonight? And all you gotta do is go meet with this salesman, da 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 da. So um, I was like, sure, I'll give it a shot. And the guy said, okay, all I gotta do, sir, is take your sunglasses off, you know, put on a collared shirt, look the person in the left eye, to the eye to the left, and give him this spit, this, just repeat these words. And I was like, oh, okay, I can do that. So I went on the boardwalk, I did it, spent the whole day, you know, sweating, handing out these cards, and there's like, 15, 20 kids doing this. Next day, literally very next day, everybody's numbers are up on a sales board. And there was a kid named Danny. He, he was like the boy next door, like red hair, just like, you know, rosy cheeks. Like he, he was always number one. And he, his number was like 56. And my number was 101. And I remember the board shows up and it was boop, 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 boop. And, uh, or just written there. And it said 101.5 times five, 250 bucks, and then you got a $100 bonus if you got the most in a day. So it said $350, 101, and then 50, it said like 56, two, right? <clears throat> and he was standing there with all his boys and everything, and I'm standing right behind him, and he turned to his buddy and he goes, who the fuck is 101? <laughs> and, and I go, oh shit, that's me. And uh, at that point, like I knew that was my first experience with any sort of entrepreneurship or, or sales at all, right? I had just done dishwashing and cutting meat, like I, that was my gig, right? So I literally, I didn't even go back to the deli. Mm. I was like, I made 350 bucks today, and like I could slice meats all week and make, you know, yeah. 150. I was like, this is, it, it just like clicked, like, you know, so I, I quit that. Lifestyle, I quit trading time for money that day. Mm. And then I spent the whole summer doing that gig, just crushing it, saving money for college. So, so you have your moment, you have your moment. Yeah, so it's like a moment, it's yeah. like this makes sense. And to me, and this might be controversial, but to me, and a lot of people, Tim might not agree with this, but whether I have fun in something has to do with how much money I'm making. Mm. You know what I mean? Like if I'm making, like, like, like it, if, if I'm killing it in the real estate game and I can make a million bucks and all I can do is show up and rally the troops and everything, it just works, you know, that's fun to me, right? It, you know, if I'm going to work and I did 850 podcasts on uh, real estate rock stars, I was losing 60 grand a month when I sold that. Hmm. You know, I'm like, it, it logically, like, it just, what? It, but if I was making $2 million doing real estate rock stars, I'd be like, oh! Oh, you get business from Sphere of Influence? No shit. Tell me about that. You know what I mean? Like, that's fascinating. You know? <laughs> I, I, and it's, uh, it just is what it is. It's true. It's just how I, I'm very money motivated. Yeah, you're the opposite. Um, it's funny because when he says that, I, I, I get what he's saying, but I think we're all unique. Mm. And, and I think that's why it's so important that you come at this from your own perspective. And just have your own way of going in, whether that's meditating or source, or um, for me, it's m uh, moving, being out in the boonies and, and um, finding my mojo. And it was always in those moments um, with my heart rate elevated on a mountain when my inspiration came. And, and it, and it kind of would lead me to what's next. And I'd have these conversations of what's working, what's not. Well, if it's not working now, what, you know, what could you do? And it's always given me and the people who can help me. You know, who am I going to, as soon as I'm done with this hike, call and have a conversation is because that's going to lead me to that next step. So. Makes sense. Going back to when you quit the real estate game, being an agent for both of you. Um, I know when I quit my job, there were two surprises. One was uh, the difference of feeling on Sunday. Sundays felt very different after I quit my job. They didn't feel like a countdown to, you know, being demoralized essentially um, anymore. 
And two was, I was amazed at how much time I didn't save. Like I thought, oh, I'm clearing a 50 hour week out, but I was still busy on the other end. That, that was me. What for you was surprising? What, would, what did you maybe have an expectation of that was different, good or bad? You know, it, was, it wasn't quite what you expected when you quit. Was there anything that stands out as, well, I, when I quit I remember that this was not what I thought it would be in a good way or a bad way? I, you, you know, so I, and I'm, I'm till, still to this day, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm a work in progress. I'm in therapy now trying to figure out like how to not feel that I need to be productive in order to have self-worth. I yeah. mean, that's some deep shit, but, but like, 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 I think the whole reason I did Real Estate Rockstars was because I wanted to be productive. I, I think that, you, you know what I mean, like, like you can do a deal and make a lot of money passively on a deal and it just doesn't uh, feel like, uh, for, you know, it, it's great, but it's kind of like your mind blocks it off like you're not making money on that deal and you think, uh, this is for me. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So anyways, I would say, uh, to answer your question, uh, it, it felt bad mm. in my head. Uh, every time I, I freed up time, I felt bad. I tried to fill the void with um, some things that didn't work, um, that were me essentially trading time for money to feel productive, mm. to uh, make somebody in my past, you know, whatever the therapist says, feel good about me, like who's sure. telling you that, is that your mom or your dad or whatever, saying good, good job uh, being a hard worker. Um, and uh, I think I had to go through several things and then eventually something sticks, uh, you know, with the universe, like GoBundance stuck, like GoBundance for me is very fun, it's very easy, it's very natural. Um, but at the end of the day, GoBundance really wasn't planned. I mean, Tim will tell you that. It was very organic. It was just us hanging out with people. It was like, hey, who do you want to invite on this hiking trip? You know, and yeah, then yeah. got the next thing you know, we have 38 guys following us down the hiking trail. We're like, shit, we got to charge money for this. You know, <laughs> this is a lot of work, you know? <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. And it's, but, it, but it was natural. It was very natural. It wasn't. Uh, but there were several other things in between, you know, when I quit real estate yeah. and GoBundance that, that I did. I, I got a, a whole wall full of uh, silly stuff that I did that at the time, like, um, like David hooked me up with Ricky Williams and I became his member sports agent and I flew him to Las Vegas and <laughs> California trying to get him all these uh, endorsement deals with cannabis companies. Whoa, you were- And all this time. You were Sticky Ricky's agent? Yeah, for like a year. I didn't know that, that's Made amazing. absolutely zero, lost like 50 grand on that gig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow, I didn't know the layers to you, man. But that makes sense to me, that, that conditioning around production, because it's a different world. Stepping into this oh, waste for me. Of time, yeah. Yeah, stepping into this world for me and meeting guys that, you know, uh, you hear so many guys say, like, yeah, I don't really do anything. It's like, how is that possible? But for you, you were having that same issue. It seemed like a good idea at the time, but looking back <laughs> on it, it's like, why, why, why I, you know, I took time away from my family, went nowhere. Yeah. You yeah, know, like that's if you the, asked him in a, at a party, you know, Pat Ivan, if he's like never heard of him, right? You know yeah. what I mean? Like, it's but but it, you know, but I but I put a lot of effort into it. And, and yeah. See, that was my job. That's what I talked about. What do you do? What do you do? The bartender said, "What do you do?" Oh yeah, well I'm working with Ricky Williams. I'm his like sports agent, you know. Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah. But it took up a lot of space, man. But it was a failure, right? And I have like six of those. Yeah. You know? yeah you're so right. I think you just got to try things and then. You gotta, you gotta realize, am I doing this just to feel productive, or is this something that's gonna, is this the right thing? And I, I, at the time, I didn't know, so I can't, I can't teach you how to, how to know for sure. Yeah, no, no, that's hard. good. But it's just, it's, I think the key is identity tends to be tied up in what we do, not truly who we are, right? And that's yeah. what you're working on now. What about you, Tim? Anything that surprised you after you quit? Um, no, I've always, whatever's next, whatever's right in front of me is where I'm at, and I. Uh, I think I'm blessed with what I call low standards, <laughs> and and <laughs> um, I I don't have a mind that complicates stuff. It's just kind of like, um, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm just gonna go do it, and not get hung up on 
um, you know, where I am, will it work, and all the things that most people complicate their mind with. I was talking to a guy at Starbucks this morning where he was talking about a nonprofit and what he wants to do with it. And he said, and I just got all these great ideas, and what happens to me is I just get overwhelmed with all these ideas, and before I get know it, I've got all of this going. Yeah. And I thought when he said that, I said, oh man, I feel sorry for him in that sense. Um, because that's so many people I meet and no matter what they do. And I, and I, want, to, I want to challenge you to get out of your head. And, and I think I, I, I said I've been blessed with this gift, if you will, of not overcomplicating stuff. Yeah. And just being happy wherever I show up, whatever I'm doing, wherever I am, I am, if that makes sense. And... Um, not trying to make it in the seventh game of the World Series or stuff. It's really not that important. Yeah. It's just, it's just I want to do the things that make me happy and whatever that is at that time until it isn't anymore. And at that point, I'm done. I never thought about li listing and selling again. I've ne I haven't invested in a property personally. It's a game I played since 2007 and never will. And I've had many things thrown um, at me, and I could have chosen. And I just said, nope, not my game, not doing it. And you're in a place now, I know you've had some you know, health scare recently where you're yeah. trying to even whittle that down more, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Overcommit. And, so, and, yeah. and yeah, I did. I had a, a bad health scare two months ago. And now my game is, is just getting um, myself on track to where I know I should be. And that's the new game. And I'm happy I wake up every day. Um, not overcomplicating things. Real quick on that, glad to see you back, by the way. Yeah. And um, one of the cooler GoBundance stories, for me at least, was that day, not that you were going through with what you, what you went through, but you're not in your own city, right. but the support group that you had taking you to the hospital, taking care of you was all GoBundance. Unbelievable. Right? Really yeah. cool. Thanks to Pat for, for setting that up. He, uh, yeah. yeah. It might be it your happened. lifesaver. Like, I don't know if you guys heard, but it was in Dallas, Texas, <clears> it was in the airport. And Three go Ray Bay, Ray Bayat came with his children, right? Yeah, uh, Chris Ryan, like like three or four champions came by yeah, in Dallas. And, I had Anthony yeah. Toller on a text ready to go. You know, there was a, <laughs> the whole wife the whole... wasn't there; he was by himself. Yeah, yeah. 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 So anyway, um, real quick before we talk about the book, I'm curious in this room who has quit, if you will, who doesn't have a job. Okay. So the rest of you, uh, who has a job but is their own company that they work in? So they have their job thinking about quitting. Okay. Um, okay, interesting. I was going to, we can go down a rabbit hole with that, but I'll, I, in the interest of it, we can take some questions after. Let's talk about the book a little bit. So the Quitters Manifesto, it releases what day? August 11th, I believe, right? The 13th. So what they do is they, it releases on biggerpockets.com on August 11th. Um, and then they, they keep it there for uh, two weeks, and then at the end of August, they release it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all that. So Got it's it. like a pre-release on their website, uh, biggerpockets.com. Pat was gracious enough to give me uh, a lot of advance on the book, about, what, three hours or so that I could read the entire book? You gave me three hours? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just kidding. But he you sent, can read it. Now. He sent me the book last night, so I got to, I got to, go, through, I got to go through it. But... Um, uh, I want to go through a couple of sections that stood out to me. So we talk about acknowledging the truth. Um, and in this, there's a lot about, you know, a pro-con list. And uh, anyway, what does acknowledge the truth? What, 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 are, what are you looking to get across in that regard? What is the truth that you're talking about? The, the truth is that quitting is scary. Like a lot of people are like, oh, quitting should be easy or you shouldn't have any fear around quitting. And the truth is, no, you should be scared shitless. Uh, and, it, and it is a fear that needs to be overcome, but you should, you should be scared, right? Uh, that, that's gonna actually help you succeed on the other end of quitting. So yeah. that, that's the truth, that quitting is a scary thing. Yeah, I love the pro-con list in here. You talk about, it's not about a pros and cons list, because I always say this, I can make a whole list of pros, there's 40 of them, but the one con is I can't feed my family. Well, that one con outweighs the 40 pros, right? So the pro-con list to me never made much sense. Um, and to your point, it is scary. I mean, you know, a bunch of guys in the room, I'm sure, are trying to think of how do I do this, can I do this, or whatever. Um, but acknowledging that it's scary, I think, is, is okay, right? Yeah, so that's fear, fear. Fear is what's actually keeping you stuck there. Yeah. Right. So like, that 
that's what's keeping you there. So it's a real thing. Yeah, 100%. Uh, you talk about asking the failure question. What is the failure question? So, what, go ahead. You, do you want to do it? No, you go. No, the, the, um, so, so the cliche failure question, the Tony Robbins one, is well, what would you do if you couldn't fail, right? And that's a great journaling exercise, right? But the reality of, of the question that you should be asking is what would you do if you did fail, right? You journal through that. That's, that's the one we want you. This is a tactical book. It's not a strategic book, right? So strategy would be like, what would you do if you couldn't fail? Oh, right. What would you do if you could fail? Sure. And then the question is, are you already failing? Mm. And that ties into the soul-sucking audit. Yeah, and, and if you're reading the book, there's a chance you might already be failing. So you're like, yeah, I am yeah. failing already. You, uh, you talk here, I think, about bankruptcy, right? Bankruptcy being my current situation, you need to file bankruptcy on it essentially, right? right? Like, you know, it's not just about financial, but the job I have, it's soul sucking and all of that, it's filing bankruptcy on your current life. Yeah. Right? Yep, yeah. yep, exactly. Um, joining a quitting team. So you, you break this out into stakeholders, partners, mentors, and coaches. Anything you want to talk about, then I have a question on this. So stakeholders, mentors, coaches, It's like and having your own personal board of directors. We all know that um, from our past. And just having that group that's going to help you go from here to there. Because it's not um, something where you decide you're going to do this and all of a sudden you're done and ready to move on. You need that team to help you get um, motivated that you need to get there. And you're clear that this isn't your network. In fact, there's an exercise I think you do in the book on how you can identify yeah. each of these these folks, right? Yeah, so, the box, yeah. what um, is there is there is there one of these coach, mentor, stakeholders, or uh, or uh, partners that you view as like you know what? If you had to choose the first one to get in line, it's get this one set for yourself. It, it would probably be the stakeholders because the stakeholders is basically your wife for this room, like your wife. Um, you know, some the person closest to you, uh, your partner, uh, who, whoever you spend the most time with. This is your stakeholders. This is like, are you with me on it? Do you believe in me on this? Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's that's the stakeholder, really. Is is that? How that, that one is you got to do first. Well, how how do you? Because I think that's a block for some folks. Like, I'd love to leave, but my wife is more conservative, or my husband. You know, doesn't yeah. You know, yeah that's what a, holding on to your ankle. Right, right, right. So, what is there any advice or counsel you give on how to have that conversation with your wife, your partner, your spouse, whatever it might be? Have have her read the book. You know <laughs> what I mean? Have 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 her go through the exercises of you know what if you did fail? It always helps, I think. What if you did fail? Did it? Did it? Would we starve? Would be eating like pieces of rice off of the tree? Yeah. Off of the street, you know. I, I mean? call that, yeah. That's a worst case scenario. You're I call that an asymmetric, asymmetric risk analysis, yeah. right? I, I did that with a guy here, actually, and it was like, right, what is the real worst case? It's not under a bridge. It's not, you know, right. scratch. It's I have to go manage Panera Bread for 68 grand a year and get a two-bed apartment. Like, right. that's yeah. that's the real worst case, right? So right. so that's, that's uh, I like that, you know, getting your spouse enrolled in that. Stop not quitting. Stop not quitting. That's a, that's a section that uh, intrigued me, so. What were you trying to get across with, uh, with that particular area? Huh? Well, we talk about this famous writer uh, who teaches uh, writers in France, uh, you know, how to write. And she says the first part of her class is, you know, she teaches them how to stop not writing, right? Which means if they just write, if she says just write and just journal and just your, your, your homework and your class activities, just write. Keep writing shit and you're, something's going to show up in there. Right. You know, you have to stop not writing. Yeah. And it's the same thing. It's a stop not quitting. Mm. You know, just you're, right now you're in your own way. Yeah, every day, kind of, I think you said this, every day that you don't quit, is a day that you're giving yourself uh, uh, permission to be Commitment to not changing. It's a commitment to not changing, right? It's like, it's like and, and even like side hustles, and I apologize if this is, the dream is to win big on a side hustle, but a side hustle is kind of like half quitting. It's kind of like um, taking 
half of a poison pill and expecting to be 100% healthy and yeah. better and energetic. Yeah. It's still half. Yeah. It's still not quitting. Right. Uh, one other part of the book that was interesting, we'll go to Q&A here in a minute, but uh, Plan B. I saw that part, and I, I just wanted to ask you, Tim, Plan B. So there's the philosophy of always have a backup plan, and there's mm -hmm. the Tony Robbins philosophy of, you know, burn your boats. Right. What's your take? Well, I think it's something wherever you are, these are the things that you got to know. Um, you, you're going t forward towards what will make for you, but you got to keep, you know, going in there and doing what you got to do day in, day out, but make damn sure you're always moving forward, if nothing else. So. Love it. Anything for you on plan B or burn your boats? Well, yeah, yeah, it's funny. I have this conversation. Like a lot of people are on this. Uh, Michael Singer, I don't know if you've read his book, The Untethered Soul, oh, and what was no. the other book? The Yes, the yes Factor. Surrender. Surrender Experiment. And, and basically what this, he, he built a billion dollar company. I'm going to give him a lot of credit. He's got a lot more money than I do. But, but, but basically in this book, he just says yes to everything. Yes to this, yes to that, yes to this. And then all of a sudden the universe just brings it to him is the idea. You say yes, you meditate, come. Right, um, I, I'm, I really don't believe in that. I really have an issue with that because, I, I mean, I do believe in the universe. I do believe things come eventually, but just saying yes to everything uh, is dangerous. I think. I mean, we know people personally that just say yes to every woman they meet, and then they're on their fifth marriage. You know what I mean? You can't. You can't just <laughs> say. You know, yeah. it's just not realistic. Yeah. You know? So, um, so anyway. So yeah. It's, okay. It's. So that's my opinion on it. That makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, just going through my notes here to see if anything else jumps out. Actually, one thing I was going to ask, when you did quit, was there ever a moment where you almost had to go back? Yeah, for me, it was uh, 2011. We were in Portland, and uh, we were going over our one sheets, and I, but I had been uh, working with real estate investors, making 250 an hour, you know, while I'm just off doing my thing, and I... Um, quit that and I was just relying on my um, income, past income to pay for everything and David and Pat were going over my numbers and I was making less than what I was bringing in and David and Pat are brutal and they were like well, what are you going to do Tim are you going to list and sell real estate are you going back to in, um, personally investing and I, I wanted to honor them but in my mind, I'm saying, I ain't doing either of those because I had quit and I had these gains of I have to move forward. And so I'm not doing either of those. I'm going to get quiet and figure out how can I move forward and not do the work myself. And I thought of Andrew Cushman, who I had coached as an investor for years, and he had just done an apartment complex. And I hit him up and said, Andrew, why don't we steal you you can be our bird dog. You can go find us the deals. David can qualify. Pat and I can sell. And that's my answer. So we've done uh, 16 apartment complexes since. Hmm. And, and it was the who, not how. So it wasn't me moving uh, backwards and doing the heavy lifting. It was finding the horse who can do the work that I no longer want to do. And, and that's a great story and, and an ascension. You made a decision to quit, um, not quitting. Like you, you, you made a decision to do something to find Andrew or, or set that up. Your initial reaction was very visceral, though, right? It was my and 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 they're great mastermind buddies, and they did it because they love me. And I'd get pissed because they were brutal in their he way of doing it. He walked off. <laughs> yeah, he, walked, he went to a festival by himself. <laughs> Robert, Robert like, Plant in town, you kidding me? Yeah. So, so, but yeah, no, my, my um, initial reaction was not good, but how I took that input and, and you know, made the yeah, lemonade. Yeah, yeah, it forced you to spend the next two weeks, and I don't think we talked for two weeks after that, it spent the next two weeks coming up with this and then popped out. Yeah. And sometimes that's what happened. It's like it goes back to the, the first part, the the, the, what's the reality of it is, is the fear, the, the negative reaction, the fear that is, is negative, 
you know, it's like you're looking down off a cliff and jumping off a cliff. You're like, no, no, no way. Yeah. And they were absolutely right that it wasn't working, but um, I, I love the way I solved the problem. And I think you guys all have that tool within you, and that's what makes us special. I said uh, uh, before I quit, and now I look back on it, the, the best investment I made was not in opening a business or investing in real estate or any of that, honestly. It was here. It was being in this room two years before I quit. You know, and that's the same for what it sounds like you guys had going on, like you had each other. That, that network equity was <clears> the most important piece because when, like my pod, when I'm, <laughs> when I'm doing something that doesn't make sense, they kind of, you know, course correct me a bit. Or when I stop doing something that really does make sense and that's aligned with me because I feel like you, Pat, like something gets in my way. Uh, I'm supposed to do this, I'm conditioning. They keep me, no, 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 you're on the right path, right? And I, that, that network equity makes me feel the most safe in quitting my job because I, I, when I left, I had more opportunities that I could say yes, that I, could, I couldn't even say yes to all of them from guys in this room, right? And for you guys, you, I know you have that connection with one another, so yeah. network equity is important in my opinion. You guys did uh, a quitters workshop recently in, uh, we had a guy from Ascendgo and he's like, it was mind blowing, absolutely incredible in uh, Springfield, I believe, right? Springfield, uh, Missouri? Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Oh, Gatlinburg, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Um, talk about that, what are you doing with this? Hey, give, give me some, some, some uh, uh, color on Quitters Workshops going forward or what you're gonna be working on. If you can show the, uh, some, some of the PowerPoints here, we have, uh, so we partnered up with these guys, uh, who knows Aaron and Ian? Um, so we partnered up with them to create a coaching club. It's called the Quitters Club. And uh, it's, it's uh, the back end to our book, essentially, right? Yeah. And, um, you know, we're teaching people basically how to quit, how to quit anything. You can keep going. Uh, um, um, we'll go back to that one. Yeah, I mean, no, basically one could be uh, Perfect. Your, your job, your bad habit, self-sabotage, thinking and playing small, putting family on the back burner, it's not just the career we're talking about. If you look at those, it's, it's about, you know, your internal wiring and making sure that that's all. So. Keep going. Yeah, so um, basically, you keep going. Um, it's a, we, have a, we have a retreat. Uh, basically, it's a, it's a four-night retreat in Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, there's the dates there, September, October. Back at one. Oh, one back, I'm yeah, sorry. Um, Terrible at this. Yeah, it's very small. Dates. You know, ba basically it's a quitters, quitters retreat. We did one in Gatlinburg. Yeah. We had about 10 guys there. Uh, we rented a huge Airbnb. Um, you're welcome to talk to them as references. Uh, Jamie's already talked to one. We got some video references. They, they loved it. They basically came out of there transformed was the idea. Spent like three nights just digging deep on quitting, you know, high intensity, yeah. immersive training. Yeah, I heard from Massey, I heard from a few other guys, yeah, they really got a lot out of it. Yeah, and Ian, Ian and Aaron are just like the masters at that sort of stuff. So here's a QR code if you want to uh, uh, check it out. Um, luxury rental in Scottsdale, private chef, high level masterminds, uh, you know, just 12 person max, seven grand. Um, or if you just want to get more information, well, let's let me get the QR real quick. Um, uh, you go here. Uh, you want me to keep going? Yeah. Okay, sorry, I saw somebody taking a picture of the QR. And there's uh, Aaron's phone number. He's a great guy, he just had a baby. He's yeah. a GoPro, 240-731-5769. Um, Totally a quitter himself, has quit a lot of things. He has, yeah, yeah. You could just leave it totally on Totally a quitter. Ha happy for him as well with the new baby, so. Yeah. Guys, always a pleasure. Take some questions from the audience. Perfect. Yeah? Sure, yeah, questions. Who's Can got you? one? 